Well, hey gang, Crash here from thecrashcast.com. Um, that is your source for answers in, this, in the radio control hobby and sometimes in the CNC hobby as it relates to radio control. We're here with this video or possibly video series to show you how to build your own power supply for hot wire foam cutting. Now, whether you're using a CNC machine to do this or perhaps using a, well, we'll call it a scroll saw type apparatus, uh, you need a way to heat that wire up in a, in a way that needs to be safe so you don't electrocute yourself or burn down the house. And uh, so, you know, I'm going to show you how to build this very rudimentary, very simple, very inexpensive hmm, device here um, to satisfy the needs of heating your own hot wire. Um, also, I wanted, I guess the biggest reason for bringing this out is the Flat Boys, uh, flatboys.com with a Z in there and... Uh, the, these guys have been making some uh, some interesting CNC machines for about two years now. The flat printer line of hobby and home CNC machines, CNC routers is what they'd be called. Well, with the onset of their latest design, the MK3 flat printer, they have already demonstrated that a simple bow can be hooked up to the Z-axis and you can use that CNC machine, well, to accurately control the foam cutter for cutting your own constant cord um, uh, foam core wings. So, um, you know, with that, I thought that uh, there may very well be a need for people coming up with low cost solutions for a power supply so that they can, you know, add airfoiled wings to their airplanes that they're manufacturing off their flat printers. So, again, this is a simple machine, um, a simple electronic gadget. I'm going to show you in this series how to how to build it. Now, I have successfully used this with a bow. I've been using it for two years on a bow that is about uh, 25, 26 inches in length. That's the length of the hot wire. Now, if you wanted to grow, go to you know, significantly greater uh, wire sizes, you're going to want to upgrade the transformer in this. And uh, that, you know, that's easily done. But for right now, I'm going to show you something that's going to work really good for your scroll saw type uh, devices and for the flat printer MK3. So, uh, here's a couple of slides to show you the parts that we're using, um, and we'll get started. Okay, we're going to start off by talking a little bit about these parts that I've shown you and, uh, and you know, given you part numbers for and so forth. The first thing I want to explain to you is, let's talk about the project box. Now I purchased this from Radio Shack. They're inexpensive, I want to say six or seven bucks. I got a bigger one, I think this is an eight inch by six inch by three inch. And you know, they're real easy to work with. They also come with a metal uh, portion that you can use instead of having this plastic you know, lid. But I like the plastic one because there's no chance of shorting wires and you know, messing anything up. And it's, plus it's real easy to drill. Uh, the aluminum plate that they put on it's kind of hard to drill and, and widen holes and so forth. Um, this transformer, again, purchased from Radio Shack. This is a uh, 120 input, 120 volt AC input. The output is you have two taps on it, and we won't, we won't even consider the black in the, in the tap here. Um, we're not even going to use that. But when you use both of these taps, uh, as the output, then you're going to create a circuit that's going to yield uh, 25.2 volts in as high as um, 2 amps. Uh, if we wanted to have more power, I know that you can buy transformers like this that'll take, uh, it'll still, I think it'll still remain at 25.2, but it'll take you up to a 4 amp output um, capability. That much current is better for handling your larger bows, your larger hot wire uh, fixtures and stuff. I've got some bind plugs here, um, bind posts rather. These are real simple. And by putting these on and using banana plugs, I can hook up various different hot wire fixtures and simply plug them in to the, to the project box via these bind posts. And I can very easily you know, power up what it is I'm working on. Now, if you've got the uh, plugs like I have here, these bind posts, you're not going to be able to see that here, but they also have a hole in them where you can actually just feed in the wire and then clamp it down. That'll work also. I prefer to use the banana plugs. It's, it's much easier. 
the dimmer control. This is what's going to give us control over the current that we're sending through the hot wire. This is five dollars. It's a Lutron. Um, it's very important when you go to get one of these. Be sure, do yourself a favor. My earlier version of the power supply, I didn't even think of this, but the one I have here now, you know, you can adjust the current, just like dimming your lights from low to high, but it's also a push on and push off. That's very important because once you get your hot wire temperature set where you like it, rather than having to monkey with it every time, you turn it on to try to readjust it. If you, if you use one that's the push on and push off instead of the one you have to turn all the way down to turn it off, then you'll always maintain your proper hot wire setting for the wire. Uh, anyway, again, now uh, we're going to talk about the cords. Now, this is going to run low wattage. It's not this whole setup. It's not necessary to have a ground plug. Uh, I had an alarm clock that uh, that went bad on me, and so many times I have an electrical appliance that I'm just going to throw out. It's broken. I can't fix it. It's cheaper to buy another one. Well, I have a tendency to scavenge off power cords and things that I might be able to use on a future project. If you have something like this, that'll work just fine. If you have, let's say, like I had, an old extension cord that was toast, um, you can simply you know, cut out a section of extension cord, or you can buy this cord at your home improvement stores, and then buy a plug for it, and then you're set. So with that, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay out all of the components. You'll get more of this uh, you know, as we go further through. But you want to lay out your lid of your project box and decide how you want all of your electrical components to go in and drill holes for mounting those things. And uh, oh, one last thing, the optional parts that I have, very nice to have. I've got a 120 volt capable uh, little neon lamp that I bought from Radio Shack. This is a good safety device because it's going to tell you when you plug in your hot wire, maybe you haven't used your hot wire power supply in a while, when you plug it in, it'd be nice to know, is it on or is it off? This little indicator light is going to tell us that. That'll keep you from getting shocked or starting a fire. Furthermore, I've put in um, the, the optional fuse. Now, I've, I've, I've started doing this with mine, and uh, this basically I'm just going to drop in a 250 volt, 20, uh, 2 amp fuse so that if we exceed for any reasons 2 amps, which is the maximum capability on our transformer, then it'll kick the fuse out. I'm using a slow blow fuse. It'll kick that fuse out and, again, keep you from perhaps starting a fire or something. So I'm going to show you how to wire in these. Now these are purely optional. You don't have to do them. I recommend you do them. It's going to cost you a few dollars more. Now uh, one last note on the project box. You don't have to buy a project box. I like these things. They're nice and they're clean and they look nice when you're all done. You don't have to buy them. They're, you can use a, a Rubbermaid container. Just whatever is going to give you the ability to solid mount everything so electrical components aren't sliding around and trying to short out one another. And we'll be back in a minute with uh, the start of the build. Okay, having taken the time to lay out my parts on the lid, I've determined what size holes I need and where to, uh, you know, and, and where to place them and all so that nothing interferes with anything else. And with that, I am ready to start mounting things into the lid. I like to mount everything onto the lid um, before I start wiring up. It just means that it's less chance of stressing wires down the line. So I'm going to take a moment, put everything in this, and then we'll talk about the next step.